Hey everybody, this is Paul Angelo here and welcome to another amazing video about how to bring success to your life in 2019 in your relationships, dating, in your sex life and in a way that it's felt, in a way that you feel progress, that you're actually moving forward. Not the kind of advice that entertains you, not the kind of advice that just keeps you feeling good, not the kind of advice that is pretty and packaged in a beautiful way. No, no. We're going to go into direct kind of advice that your father would have given to you, that someone that you love would have given to you, something that you absolutely need to hear and not necessarily is going to make you feel good, but the advice that's going to produce progress in your life. And that's what this video is about. I'm going to share with you five tips that I believe are going to blow your mind and help you actually feel the progress in your heart, in your mind. And this time around, you're going to achieve the relationship you always wanted. You're going to date men that are going to connect with you, make you feel great, with whom you can consider a possibility of marriage. That's what this video is about. We will begin the exploration of this topic with a quick reminder about what it's like to be gay today. And if you've been around for a little while, you would agree that being gay is a lot more complicated, a lot more challenging. Our relationships, our sex lives are very complex. And if those of you who are over 40 experience a midlife crisis, it usually hits 10 times stronger, 10 times harder than it does for straight people. So without any doubt, we would agree that gay life is a lot more complicated, that our relationships, our dating, our attempts to connect and fall in love, they come with a lot more moving pieces. The puzzle called gay life is a lot more difficult to put together. And so before we enter into the five tips I've put together for you today, let's enter into that space with the recognition of how difficult, more complicated gay life is. And that to step outside of it or to transcend it, to go above it and get where you want to get, we have to have a different strategy. We have to do things that perhaps you've never done before. Maybe things that you've never heard before are even possible. And to simplify this, we want to enter into the solution process by looking at it from two perspectives. First, we got to stop the bleeding we gotta stop doing the things that don't work. And then on the other side, we gotta start doing things that work a lot better. And these may be things that you've never considered doing before. So again, first we recognize how difficult our lives are, how challenging our dating and relationships is, and our attempts to try to fix it, our ongoing desires to produce the results that we wanna produce. And if that's not going the place that you wanna to get to, we gotta take a step back, we got to reflect a little bit and then say, okay, we got to stop the bleeding and we're going to start doing new things. Sometimes we can use the metaphor of, of a soldier that's wounded to explain how to make progress in our lives. If you are wounded by your experiences, we got to first stop the bleeding. Dating and relationships carry with themselves a lot of requirement for energy, for your persistence. And we cannot be persistent. We cannot bring energy to the process of dating and meeting people if we are bleeding. If we are bleeding psychologically, so this means if we're doing things that hurt us on a psychological level, or if we still carry with us serious and deep wounds from the past. And also when we engage in activities that on an ongoing basis trap us, that create environments where nothing is possible. And so we got to stop doing all those things. And on the another side, we got to introduce new behaviors, new ways of thinking, new ways of going about getting the results that you want. And so that's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to do today in this video. Also, one additional component I wanted to bring into this an extra ingredient is the ingredient of seriousness. So I'm, I want this video to be mostly targeted for gay men over 40. I remember when I was in my 20s and early 30s, I didn't want to learn anything. I didn't want to read a book. 
I didn't want to listen to someone tell me about how to succeed or how to make my relationships work or how to date. I was not receptive. And I became receptive when I started to hit places of difficulties, when I started to struggle, when my assumptions were proven wrong and when I realized that I had no idea what I was doing. And all of that happened when I had the struggles. And so after 40 is usually when we are dedicated with a lot more passion, a lot more genuine interest in transformation. Prior to 40, we kind of fuck around. We still take life kind of like a day-to-day -day experience. We don't put a lot of real thought and reflection into it. And so we don't listen to advice that's more serious. We don't listen to advice that asks us to do something we've never done before. So this video I want to dedicate to men who have had struggles already, who have had serious hardships in your life, and who are now ready for a transformation on a more serious level. This information is not the feel-good information I'm gonna share with you. It's the information that should have come to you from your father, should have come to you from a place that you trust, from a place that comes with information wrapped around with love. And I hope that you're gonna see this, see this in the advice I'm gonna give you that it actually comes from a place of love, comes from a place of care, but it won't make you feel good. And I can almost guarantee you this, that this is not what's gonna make you feel good, but this is what you need to hear. So now as we created a broader context and we introduced the, the sprinkle of seriousness, let's get into the five tips I put together for you to help you succeed in dating, relationships, love for the rest of your life, beginning with 2019. So the first, the first, and I believe this is most important one, the most important number one piece of advice, the number one tip is to get your information about dating, about relationships, about love, about sex, from a place that you trust, not from strangers. Most of the information that you've received about dating, about relationships, probably came from people that were total strangers. From people, kind of like you met them at a coffee shop and people exchanged advice that was never validated by science. It was never validated with a proof of concept. It was never validated because it's supported by a certain best practice. It's simply one person waking up, rolling out of bed and deciding to believe in one thing and then sharing that one thing with everybody else and all of a sudden everybody's believing the same thing, but nobody tested it. And we call it the blind leading the blind or the blind following the blind. So the number one transformation that you can make, and if you really want success in 2019 in relationships and dating, is that you gotta get your information from places that you trust. Don't listen to your friends. Don't listen to your buddies. Don't listen to feel good, entertain me, pretty kind of advice and simplistic kind of advice. There's absolutely no shortcuts in life today. There's no shortcuts. Everything that is worth doing is gonna be very hard to do. And what I mean by worth doing is anything that leads to long-term transformation and positive outcomes is gonna come with a lot of effort. There's no question about it. There's no question about it. But it has to come from a place of trust. And that's the number one most important thing. So wherever you get your information, ask yourself, do I trust this information? Or is this coming to me from a pretty boy? Or is this coming to me from someone who is just really good at shouting loud and screaming loud and getting a lot of attention, but in reality, that person has no clue what they're talking about. Check the credibility for the information that you're getting. Check the scientific foundations for the information that you're getting. That is the number one advice. And if you do just that, you're gonna see massive results because you're gonna see that most of the information you're getting is not coming from source of trust. It's simply coming from a source of feel good, uh, validating you for something you already know. 
So there's no use for that information anyway, because you already know this. So nothing new is added to your life. Nothing new is added to your life, to your way of thinking about dating, relationships, sex, and all the things that make success possible in those areas. So again, number one tip, go after places you trust. Now, let me also talk about how this works for straight people. So in straight people's lives, information about dating, sex, and relationships is passed from generation through generation, all the way down to little kids when they're in their teenage years to prepare them for dating and relationships. So for many, many years, everybody in the straight life gets bombarded with advice from their family members, from people they love, from people they trust. And if the earlier generation succeeded, then the latter, later generation will succeed too. And so on and on and on it goes. And so that's why in straight circles, in straight communities, if you can say it like this, they succeed a lot faster because it's the family tradition where the information about love, sex, marriage comes down from the family tree down to everybody else in the family. And the information comes with a true care, true love, interest in the well-being of the children, of the people in the family. And so none of that is happening in the gay world you don't see any family members passing down information about relationships, sex, and dating to you or to any gay man because it's just not how it is. They have no clue how it works. So we are left alone without any support, without any information that comes with love, comes with care, comes with a genuine desire to make you a better person. All the information is basically strangers. It's basically strangers. People that they don't know you, they don't want to know you, they only just whip out advice and they whip out ideas and they throw it at you and because it makes you feel good, you accept it or because you heard it in three other places, you assume that it has been validated that it must work. And that is really, the, in my opinion, that is the number one reason why gay men struggle today in relationships and it's actually a quick and easy fix. Just get the right info and you'll be fine. The second tip for success is for you to go back to science and get information that is based on science, not based on feeling good in the area of dating, relationships, and sex. So this means going to the bookstore and picking up books about gay dating, gay relationships, taking courses, studying the subject matter, because as we talked about in the tip number one, you did not receive any of this competency from your parents, from your siblings, from people that you trusted. So we got to get that information, give it to our brains. So we have all these different distinctions that help us navigate the deep waters of relationships. I believe that this is also one of the fastest. And I mean, just a couple of months of learning and your transformation will be really radical in dating and relationships. That's how fast this one tip can transform your relationships. So we need distinctions, we need advice, we need best practices, we need methodologies for how to connect, how to earn trust, how to have sex, how to date, how to progress through the different stages of dating, different stages of relationships and marriage. There is science behind that, human beings are not trying to connect to each other today or in 2019 or 18 for the first time ever. This has been an issue in the world for thousands of years. And so there are a lot of good resources out there. Just go to the bookstore or come back to my website, watch the videos, take the courses, enroll in coaching programs. That is the fastest way for you to produce results in your dating and relationships. One of the common mistakes that gay men make is that we assume that inside of us, we have that innate knowing how relationships work, that every human being out there has this something inside them that guides them to make relationships work. And I think that you've seen so far that that 
inside something that we assume it's in you, in many others, that guides us to make the right decision, that doesn't exist. That level of competency, that level of knowing has to be given to us. It's a developmental thing. It's not innate to human beings to be able to connect to one another. We have to be shown how to do that. And you see, straight people have had that. So straight people can get away with not having to learn this from books. But even so, they still have thousands and thousands and thousands of books about the psychology of relationships, solving conflicts, how to avoid meeting sociopaths, psychopaths, borderline people, narcissistic people, people with bipolar disorders. I mean, there are thousands of books and we ask the question, why? Because this area is quite complex. Relationships are complex. They always will be. And so you really have to surrender yourself to using science. Not what you feel is good for you, which is the equivalent of attracting psychopaths and sociopaths, because that's really the symbol of masculinity today. And that's who we attract to our lives. Instead of falling in that trap and spending 20 years in that trap, let's instead rely on books on learning about what does it mean to relate to one another? What does it mean and how does it actually come together to bring in sexuality in the relationships? How to move from one stage to the next and pass the stage of earning trust as you date, enter into relationships and marriage? How to overcome the testing that your partner is going to expose you to, to test whether you're going to walk away or stay? How some people have problems with attachments and others are very easy to connect with others. All that stuff is based on science. It's not complicated once you enter into it, but it's almost impossible to make relationships work if you never enter into it. So you don't have to be an expert in psychology, but some rudimentary distinctions that help you navigate the deep waters of relatedness, that has to be there. And I'm assuming that if you're really serious, that I don't have to force you to do this, that you actually volunteer to do this, kind of like in many other areas of life. When I started biz my business, I had to learn about business. I never liked learning about business. In fact, I hated it. But if I never learned it, I wouldn't be here today talking to you. I also used to hate reading books about relationships, but then I started learning them and then I met Frank and I overcame a lot of the issues that he and I had. And Frank and I, we had a lot of big time issues and problems in our relationship. And the only way I survived it, the only way that we overcame it together, the only reason that he's still in my life and we're having the best time of our lives, hiking the mountains of Colorado and really exploring the intimacy and the depth of our relationships, all of that is possible only, only because I have prepared myself that the situations that he and I were confronted with, they were not a foreign territory where I had to experiment, where I walked away like most, what most people do. So I had the knowledge, I had the competency, and because I had that, I survived it. And now we are benefiting from it. We have now produced the fruit of the hard labor of sustaining through the difficulties. And the only way we can sustain through the difficulties is, is when we understand what's going on. Uncertainty is gonna cause you to walk away. And the only reason for you to bring certainty to relationships is to actually recognize that most of those patterns have been described in books. Most of the patterns that you're gonna see in relationships and dating, they're not a foreign territory. They're actually behavioral patterns that exist for a reason. It's not something random. Relationship behaviors, people walking away or staying, people saying things or not saying things. Those are patterns of human behaviors that have been described in books that you can find out, read about, and then you can implement them. So for example, compatibility, the science of connecting, the science of um, how to bring in trust into relationships, how to stay as opposed to walking away. Those are, those are things that are described in books, in courses. You can learn how to do that. So the tip number two is bring in science. Don't rely on feel good information. And one more thing I wanted to throw in there, getting therapy is not getting science. It's not getting answers. Therapy is about healing you. Therapy 
is about exposing something that you couldn't see. Therapy does not bring you the knowledge. The therapist is not there to give you information about how to do X, Y, and Z. And so therapy is great, but therapy is not the transformation. Therapy for gay men especially is not a transformation. Therapy is gonna give you a closer uh, ability to see inside you, to be able to talk about things that you previously were not willing or able to talk about, to expose certain things from the past. Yes, therapy for that reason is great, but it's not enough. Therapy is not enough. And I see this with a lot of my clients, they've had therapy and they're still struggling. They're still struggling because the distinctions, the best practices, the methodologies were not giving to them. And a lot of therapists don't have those and many therapy modalities are not designed to give you those. So on, uh, for the right reasons, the therapist should not give you those because that's not what therapy is. Therapy is not about answers. Therapy is about awareness. It is about awareness. Huge distinction, huge difference. All right, here's tip number three for a major transformation of your personal life in 2019. And you've heard me say this before, and I'm gonna say this over and over and over. And here it goes. Leave the hookup websites and the hookup apps and the online dating websites behind and do not go back. Even if you're tempted, even if you're lonely, even if you're desperate, do not go back. Find better alternatives. Because this is the place where you're producing the bleeding. You are the wounded soldier. You are bleeding. You can't produce the necessary ingredients for a legitimate relationship and dating experience if you're constantly on those dysfunctional places. Let me share with you the scientific information about what creates a healthy beginning for a human relationship. And that is emotional safety, emotional safety and trust. Do you have that with hookup websites, online dating websites? Of course you're not. So on a deep, deep level, you are producing a psychological bleeding. You are training yourself to feel good about things that are dysfunctional. You are training yourself to simplify something that's complex. Relationships are complex. And we assume that we're gonna type something to someone on a hookup app or a dating website and somehow a relationship will be produced. It's an oversimplification and in all cases, and I think I can say this today in 2019, in, all, in 2018, in all cases today, it produces bleeding and negative experiences. Online dating may have worked in 2005 or 2006, but today it's just everybody is part of the party and mostly dysfunctional ways of communicating, dysfunctional ways of interacting and looking at each other is the beginning when you do those apps. Stop the bleeding. Stop the bleeding, please. Listen to me. I've been there. I've bled for years. And I eventually said to myself, you know, this is not a way to live life. This is not a way to live life. Find alternatives. Now, for me, it took a lot of struggles, a lot of suffering to find alternatives and to never go back to those apps as a way of looking for lovers, looking for partners. Those apps are only designed for entertainment purposes. They're only designed for kind of like a game, but it's a dangerous game because it carries with itself psychological implications. Many people that use apps over and over they actually, and there is research on this subject. I don't have it right in front of me, but you can look it up online. You can put how does online dating and hookup web hookup apps influence dating ability and relationship possibility. And you will see tons of research. It all goes back to the fact that human relationships can never begin it from those places. And those people who are exposed to those places over and over eventually train themselves in such a way that it takes them, it will take them a lot of therapy, it will take them a lot of undoing of those patterns to be able to ready for normal relationships. For them to be ready for normal, normal relationships. So they are normalizing the dysfunctional and they are making the normal the abnormal. You see, so they are making the good things the enemy and they are making the bad things the normal. 
And so if you are, and I see this with some of the clients that come to me and they confess to me that, hey, I'm using Grinder or I'm using uh, Scruff or Grawler or many others, I say to them, listen, if you're serious about your relationships, you gotta stop those things. It will create deep psychological bleeding that will eventually expose the person to deeply psychological wounding if that person starts to meet actually those people on those places in person because uh, they will be abandoned, they will be objectified, they will be treated like an object, not like a human being. So we gotta stop the bleeding. Don't do those dysfunctional places, please. They're very dysfunctional. You gotta find alternatives. So now let's talk about tip number four, and here it is. Don't become a victim of the gay culture. Don't become a victim of the gay culture. What this means, and I'm gonna get give you a specific example of this. We assume, and you too, you have assumed that there's someone or a group of someones, a group of people that actually guide the gay community forward. We assume that there is some committee somewhere, some group of gay men that are evaluating the happenings of the gay culture and are willing to correct it, are willing to improve it and guide the community forward. And that is just not true. There's nobody out there that cares about you. There's nobody out there that's gonna come and give you the answers. We are basically on our own. And when we are on our own in a world where gay men have never received any training, where gay men have had no support from their parents, and when basically nobody cares about us, what happens? Well, chaos happens. Chaos happens. And inside of that chaos, we become victimized. We become victimized. And so those places are the places where the drag queens come out from, the leather people come out from, the bears come out from, and all the subdivision, all the labels, tops and bottoms, and I can go on and on and on, and I'm sure you know what I'm talking about here. That's the places where those dysfunctional, victimizing places originate from. And you don't want to belong to any of those groups. You don't want to be associated with any of those groups because none of those groups' principles or best practices have any intention of giving you any value. They're just simply the outcomes of chaos. They're simply the outcomes of chaos. The gay culture is an, a phenomenon that has never existed in the history of humanity. We never have an example of something like this in the history of humanity. So we don't really know what this gay culture is doing, how it's working. Is it going somewhere? Is it bringing value to our lives? All we know is that we are gay, but when we look at the gay culture, there is no foundations in there from a philosophical perspective. There's no foundations in there from a psychological perspective. And everybody is forcing everybody else to accept one another despite heavy, heavy dysfunctional behaviors, heavy, heavy rapture of philosophical, psychological principles that have been created for thousands and thousands of years and have been the fundamentals for happiness and fulfillment. So don't let the gay culture victimize you. Again, please listen to this. I've spent 15 years of suffering and struggle in believing that following the advice that comes from my friends or following the advice that comes from the bears or the leather people or the drag queens or those people, don't listen to that. It's nonsense. The moment you bring in science and philosophy and psychology to those groups, all of a sudden you realize how extremely dysfunctional they are. So don't let them uh, disconnect you from psychology, from principles of psychology and philosophy. And they will use the card of equality and acceptance to manipulate you that whatever they believe in is functional and that you are wrong by rejecting them. Don't fall for that. Again, don't fall for that. Don't let the gay culture victimize you. And step outside of it, remain gay, love yourself, become authentic, 
but don't associate yourself with people that have labels on them and that are participating in activities that any psychologist or any counselor with a sign of integrity uh, on his doors or on his uh, degrees would, would disagree with. And what you will find out is that if you ask a professional psychologist or if you ask a philosopher about many of the aspects of gay life, they're going to immediately say, you know what, 90% is extremely dysfunctional. 90% is extremely dysfunctional. Find the 10% and sit there. And I believe the 10% that's more functional in the gay culture is the place where the gay professionals go to. The networking events where you see men that are employed, that are functional, that are aspirational, that have goals, that have dreams, that have purpose. Those places is where you need to go. All other places are going to send you in a spin of complex issues and challenges that you frankly don't want to waste your life on. So this is my advice for you. Number four, don't let the gay culture victimize you. And now the final tip for bringing transformation to your personal life in 2019. And I left the best for last. This tip is about sex and it deals with anal sex and sexual compatibility. Both ideas coming out of the culture of sexual addiction and shame. And I would add to that culture of ignorance. As I shared with you before, gay men have never received information from a place of love, from a place of trust. Our information, our interactions with each other are not based on science. They're based on feel good. And our culture is not a culture that has a committee of people that are deciding on what's good for us or bad for us. And most often we get victimized when we participate in the gay culture. And so anal sex and sexual compatibility are similar. They're coming out of a place where nobody really cares, nobody wants to care, and people just want to feel good as opposed to creating progress, as opposed to transcending and ascending themselves to a higher level of life where love is really possible. I mean, think about it. Look around you. Why is it that 95% of gay men are single? Why is it that most gay men are single? Why? Why? Is it because there's something wrong with them? Is it because there's something missing? No, it's because we are swimming in a soup of false ideas. None of those ideas are proven by any logic, by any research, by any science. And like I said before, it's like the blind leading the blind. The blind leading the blind. Any philosopher, any science, uh, any researcher would be laughing at the gay community and they are laughing at, at us. And they're laughing at us for a reason and they have valid reasons. Anal sex and sexual compatibility are ideas that are completely irrational. Let's start with anal sex. You can research the subject by yourself today and there is an overwhelming amount of evidence that is extremely bad for us. But don't ask your fellow gay friends about this because they're not going to want you to do this. You have to step outside of the bubble of the group thing, psychologically speaking, the group thing phenomenon in the gay culture where we want to accept anyone and anything. If someone wants to cut off his penis, we say go cut off his penis and be happy without realizing that that person will probably commit suicide or have depression for the rest of his life. That's what the gay culture teaches. The gay culture says if you want to dress up as a woman, then go dress up as a woman and be happy without recognizing that that person is going to have massive identity complications. With the issue of anal sex, don't ask your gay friends about it. Actually ask your straight friends about it and go out there and do your research. Look into the concept of anal cancers and blood sepsis to help you find the, the research that help you make a logical and educated decision. I know this is not going to be easy. And for me, it took, it took me about five years 
from the moment I finally accepted it on a logical mental level until I stopped the practices. I'm not saying this is going to be easy. This is actually going to be very difficult. This is going to be very difficult, but this is the only reason why I'm still here today talking to you. This is the only reason why I was able to be successful in my business because the activities that I have to engage in, they require higher performance. They require me to be on my top game a lot more often than other people. And I would never be able to be this way if I constantly, or if I even every now and again, participate in, in anal sex. And obviously many of you will disagree with this. So let's just simplify this and let's, um, let's ask you to do the research by yourself in the area of blood sepsis and anal cancers. And you'll see overwhelming evidence that what we are being told about anal sex from our fellow gay men, it's simply irrational at best and evil from a philosophical perspective. For one gay man to tell the other that something they've never tested, they've never proven by science, they've never investigated on their own and they just repeat it to another person and telling them to engage in that behavior, for one to do it to another, I would say that's an evil act. From a philosophy, there's this distinction, good and evil. And if we tell other people, if I were to say to you, anal sex is good for you, that's evil. That's an evil advice because it's not good for you. It's very bad for you. And we need to stop pretending that the gay world is based on anal sex. It's not. And I'll leave, your, I'll leave you to do research on your own um, and it will take you some years to become comfortable with it, and but eventually you'll come to the same conclusion. Or you will become victimized by the gay culture and this high level of operation of your life, of your sense of being, will not be acceptable or uh, will not be accessible for you and thereby the, the discussion about anal sex will no longer be necessary. And many gay men are in that situation. They have regressed to such a point where that higher level of life is no longer available for them. And so they're not interested in discussion about anal sex. To them, all of their lives is about anal sex. And that leads me to the second part of this tip, and that's sexual compatibility as an outcome of a sex addict rationalizing his choices for partners. So as an easy way to explain this is to recognize that relationships from any perspective of science, of any rational mind, any logical way of thinking, relationships are all about trust, all about love and caring and reliability and loyalty and responsibility. Those people that start to bring in sex into the equation, they are creating a detour. They're creating a covert kind of like corruption of the process of human relatedness and human connection. And they want to disrupt trust by introducing sexuality or a certain sexual practice that has to be matched by someone. And if not matched, the relationship cannot continue. Another way of looking at sexual compatibility is to use it as a way of understanding someone's priorities. Is someone looking for a relationship or is someone looking for sex? If someone is looking for sex, hey, that's great. But if someone is looking for relationships and still uses the concept of sexual compatibility to create a connection, that's just irrational. And that's where the challenge happens for most gay men. Because what that will create is a situation of cycles of breakups. Because what creates the glue, the glue between human beings is not sex, but it's trust. I mean, think about it. You have sex with so many people. Why aren't they all your lovers? Because sex does not connect. So we need trust. And to create trust, we need to know how to do it. We need, we need to know how to relate to one another. We need to know how to solve problems. And most gay men don't enter into that space of practicing those concepts because they are perpetually seeking sexual compatibility. And the moment something difficult shows up, they end up breaking up, walking away and restarting the whole cycle. When you remove sexual compatibility from the ways of looking at relationships, all of a sudden you can enter into the deeper waters of relatedness. And that's where the real game of relationships begins. 
And I remember in my relationship with Frank, we didn't have sexual compatibility up front. And I recognized that as a learning curve for me. And I looked at it as a challenge. I said to myself, no, I'm going to stick with this man. We don't have that sexual connection right up front, but I still find him beautiful. I don't want to do a lot of the things that he wants me to do or that he wants to do to me, but I'm going to stick around. And I'm glad I did because today I love him with everything I've got and I would have never wanted anything to be different between us. So I have seen in my own practice, in my own life, the turnaround from a place of lack of sexual compatibility towards a place of creating a sensual experience, love and an extraordinary adventure on top of that. By the way, I'm sharing all of this information with you because I've lived through it all. I've done all the things that you've done and I have experimented just like you have experimented. I have suffered just like you have suffered. I have had the panic attacks like you've had the panic attacks. I've had moments of crying, moments of deep, deep questioning of who I am and who I wanted to be in relationships and whether I will ever find anyone. I've had those moments. I've had them. I'm not telling you all these ideas to preach to you something that I want you, I want to force you to do because I am the boss and you're my slave. This is not the perspective here. I am telling you this because I've lived through the challenges and I found a solution and the solution was counterintuitive and it worked and it worked. And I know what I'm sharing with you about anal sex and sexual compatibility may be counterintuitive, but try it, try it and you will see a miracle in your life. So I wanted to end this video with an invitation to testing out new ways of being, of letting go of the sexual impulses being the driving forces behind your choices for partners, behind your choices for who you want to be around. Because those impulses are programmed to you by a culture that doesn't really care about you, by people that don't really love you. They don't know you. How can they possibly know what to tell you what's right for you if they don't even know you? So I recommend that you follow these five tips that I shared with you today and transform your life forever. And I'm 100% certain that if you put to use even one of the tips that I shared with you today, your life will be better off and better off quickly, not over the course of 10 years, but better off almost immediately than the life that you've had prior to that. So now let's summarize the five tips. Number one, get your information from trusted sources, from places that show concern about your long-term well-being. Most people that feed you information, they don't really know you very well. They don't, sometimes even, they don't want to get to know you. They're just having conversations. They're just sharing with you their superficial, surface level ideas. So you don't want to rely on that in your love life, in your life in general. Number two, get back to science. The information that you seek is out there. You just need to go and claim it. Increase your skills about dating, relationships, love, and sex. Build up competencies. There are books, courses, training programs. Go out there and get them. Number three, stop the bleeding. Don't participate with the online hookup websites and online apps. They contribute to the programming of dysfunctional habits into your life. They normalize the bad stuff and they make the good stuff foreign. And they make the good stuff bad stuff. Obviously, not a good solution. And then don't let the gay culture victimize you by inviting you into participation in dysfunctional habits that are popularized by a lot of the groups in the gay culture. And the final tip is one most controversial, but very useful nevertheless. And I highly recommend you research this on your own. You don't just rely on what I have to say. So you research this on your own. Try to put and end to anal sex and sexual compatibility. I know this is going to take a while for you, but I want to plant this seed in your mind. It doesn't go anywhere good. And from everything that we know today, it actually is of um, a dangerous territory for you and it doesn't make your health any better. These five tips will create a massive transformation in 2019 in your personal life. 
I hope that you put them to use. And for any additional information, please visit my website at paulangelo.com. In the blog, we have a lot more videos about the science and the psychology of dating, relationships, connection, creating a marriage, and of course, sexuality. And you can find more information that takes what you've learned today into the next level. So the information is out there. It's just a question of your willingness to change your life and make the improvements necessary to go to the next level in your life. So I hope this has been helpful for you. I'm looking forward to talking to you soon. Until then, as always, my friends, go out there, think big, stay present, and be a leader in your life today. Signing off, talk to you soon. Can I ask you to subscribe to my channel so that every time I create a new video that you'll get a notification and also that with every video, every topic that we talk about, we raise the vibrations in our community. There's so much emphasis on sexuality and hookup websites that we want to raise that. We want to change the topics that we talk about and with that, we change our relationships, we change our lives. So please subscribe to my channel. Also, the second thing I'd like to ask you to do is to come back to my website at paulangelo.com on a regular basis because I post more advanced frameworks and trainings that help you understand the complexities of gay sexuality, of gay relationships, of dating, and now marriage. So if you're interested of getting a deeper dive into understanding of gay life, I put free trainings on the website at paulangelo.com. So please check there regularly. And the final thing I'd like to ask you to do, if you're ready for a transformation of your relationships, of your life, then please come back to the Big Gay Family Social Program website. I'd like for you to join us, to come and meet all the men that are part of the program. You'll get introductions, you'll get courses, you'll get coaching, a comprehensive solution to take you from where you are today into a radical, positive, transformation of your relationships. If marriage is important to you, if love is important to you, then this program is for you when you are ready. So thanks for watching. Until we talk in the next video, as always, my friends, go out there, think big. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Everything will be okay. Think big. Stay present. Feel yourself. Feel who you are. And ultimately, go out there and become a leader. Take a stand towards love. Take a stand towards marriage. Take a stand towards a life that works. And I'm here to help you do that. So thanks for watching. I'm looking forward to talking to you in the next video.